Bristol's two league football clubs are talking tonight of tough measures to control the hooligans. The last Saturday of the league season ended in shameful scenes involving both sets of fans. The trouble began even before the kickoff at Ashton Gate when a visiting Sheffield United supporter was cut with a Stanley knife. The game was held up as fighting broke out with hundreds of fans invading the pitch. Later at Tewkesbury, police detained a coach full of Rovers supporters after some of them gate crashed a wedding party. And at Western Super Mare, 200 Sheffield supporters ran riot through the streets. Here with the first of two reports is Bob Crampton. This was the scene in the Dolman stand known as the family enclosure just minutes before the end of the game. A policeman tried desperately to beat back fans intent on trouble. For several hectic, violent minutes, it looked like a losing battle. They spilled onto the pitch, the football suddenly taking second place to scenes that have sickened the true fans. Four and a half thousand followers of Sheffield United had come to Ashton Gate. Many had requested seating. Two sections of the Dolman stand were given over to the visitors, an unusual move away from the normal penning behind bars. It was to backfire on club officials. There'd been more policemen on duty, an extra 40 officers to bring the total to 130. But today their commander said he used his resources to try and prevent trouble. I had to use almost a quarter of the, the men at my disposal to spend the whole of the afternoon standing between B and C blocks, acting as a human barrier, uh, absorbing physical and um, verbal abuse just to keep the, the rival fans apart. However, there was nothing to stop the fans moving forward. Club officials realised Saturday's scenes destroyed the argument for the removal of barriers. What has been advocated at the moment that we should have an all-seater stadium. Um, it shows us exactly the problems which happens, and, and I've said this for a long, long time. Um, it's far more difficult to police and control people who are seated if they decide to cause trouble than those people who are on the terraces within the fencing. The blame is again laid with the mindless hooligan elements, but the feeling is these fences stopped a major riot on Saturday. Well, I have um, little doubt that, that the fences prevented uh, more fans from joining in the disorder, um, and there's a, a high probability that uh, we would have had a more serious situation um, had it not been for the, for the fences protecting those uh, at both ends of the ground behind the goals. There were 14 arrests in the ground following the violence. Already there's been a meeting fixed where the police will discuss with the club security arrangements for next season. Despite the national debate on such fencing, this caging may remain at Ashton Gate for the next season. Certainly after last Saturday's trouble, the police and the club will be in no hurry to see it torn down. Indeed, these bars may well end up in the seated sections, up to now relatively trouble-free areas. From time the match was held up for seven minutes until police restored order. Every time this violence breaks out, it adds strength to the Luton Town theory that if there were no away supporters allowed, there would be nobody for the home fans to fight.